Hello ladies and gentlemen. The topic of our presentation is prenatal practices among various cultures in the United States. How acculturation may affect birth weight. This is a team project from the Keck School of Medicine at USC in Los Angeles under the guidance of Dr. Julia Borve. Our team includes Antonio Escobar, Chris Nguyen, Megan Tarani, Farrell Tobolowski, and myself, Jonathan Beck. In the beginning of our presentation, we'll be giving a background of Asian and Hispanic populations, an introduction to our study, as well as defining of operational terms. We will then give an in-depth explanation of key dietary traditions and beliefs, as well as an examination of social support in accordance to maintaining cultural dietary practices. Finally, we will give our results, our conclusion as dictated by those results, as well as any limitations and future direction found during our study. The number of immigrants coming to the U.S. is increasing annually. The largest ethnic group arriving in the U.S. is the Latino population, which comprises of 15% of the current U.S. population and is expected to rise to 30% by the year 2030. The second largest ethnic group arriving in the U.S. is the Asian population, which currently comprises of 5% of the U.S. and is expected to rise to 9% by the year 2050. With these increasing immigrant populations, it becomes very important for healthcare professionals to be aware of ethnic differences when addressing pregnancy. Specifically, this literature review focuses on three main aspects of diet, cultural dietary beliefs, staple foods of the culture, and social support of maintaining diet. We examined Hispanic and Asian pregnant mothers who had adhered to either non-acculturated or acculturated diet and compared the health statuses of their newborns. We define non-acculturated as a first-generation gener foreign-born mother. We define acculturated as a second-generation U.S.-born mother. Social support was defined as family and friends of the same ethnicity living within close proximity. Poor infant health was measured through a birth weight of less than 2,500 grams. We use this measurement because birth weight is the highest risk factor of infant mortality. The theory of hot and cold for Asians is based on the ancient Chinese idea about the elements of the earth fire, water, air, and earth. Fire represents heat, water represents wetness, air represents cold, and earth represents dryness. These four elements are incorporated into the concept of yin and yang, which is essentially a balance of opposites. Yin is a negative female energy that produces cold, darkness, wetness, and emptiness. And yang is believed to be the positive male energy, providing warmth, light, dryness and fullness. It is believed that good health is achieved through a balance of these two. Any kind of disruption would have to be corrected through food and physical activities. Foods are classified as either hot or cold and depending on how the woman views pregnancy, she will consume or restrict certain foods so that she can keep in balance with good health. The classification of food as either hot or cold is based on the content of the food and its effect on the body rather than the actual temperature of the food. Hot foods are high in protein, fats and calories, and provide lots of energy. Cold foods would be the opposite, providing less energy overall. Example of hot foods are coffee, red meat, spicy soups, and garlic. Examples of cold foods include most vegetables, fresh fruits, grains, and soy products. There is a variation of this theory, depending on the culture and location. For example, Chinese and Chinese Americans generally view all three trimesters of pregnancy as a cold state, and so they consume mostly hot foods during that period. Whereas, Vietnamese women believe something a little different. In a survey done in Queensland, researchers found that the Vietnamese women believe that the first trimester of pregnancy is considered a cold state. And so, women are recommended to eat hot foods, including ginger and foods containing black pepper, and to avoid cold foods, such as pineapples and some vegetables. The second trimester is believed to be a neutral state, and women are permitted to eat more of these foods. And in the third trimester, which is considered a hot state, women are recommended to restrict the amount of food consumed and avoid taking natural supplements. So how does diet change as Asians become more acculturated? What happens is that they transition to higher consumption of animal products, increase in fats and sugars consumed, and decreasing complex carbohydrates like whole grain breads and oats. Transitioning to Hispanic American population, Hispanics also follow the hot-cold theory. 
However, there is not a consistent definition between different Hispanic cultures of what foods fall under each category. As in Asian culture, illness is determined to be caused by the quality of the food and not just the food substance itself. During pregnancy, women are supposed to avoid cold foods which are harder to digest. Also, they are told to give into food cravings to not cause harm to the fetus. Women are encouraged to eat regular homemade meals. Lastly, any kind of restriction of dietary intake is looked down upon as fuller figures are considered more ideal. Now, looking at acculturated mothers, the mother role has less importance than in the traditional cultural sense, where pregnancy is seen as a time of vulnerability and a rite of passage. In acculturated populations, financial con contributions are often emphasized, which creates a multi-role lifestyle where women are extremely busy and find it difficult to follow traditional dietary beliefs. Also, avoidance of excess weight gain and change of body images are emphasized as ideals that are adopted during the process of acculturation. Many individuals find it difficult to balance these factors and thus restrict dietary intake. So what do these women actually eat? In general terms, non-acculturated individuals eat more carbohydrates and high fat foods and use more vegetables in food preparation. On the other hand, acculturated individuals eat fewer carbohydrates and more low-fat foods. Also, they have a decreased usage of vegetables in meat and rice preparation. To be a bit more specific, here are some examples of staple foods. Non-acculturated individuals are more likely to eat corn tortillas, refried beans, rice with vegetables, pasta, high-fat milk, and fruit while their acculturated counterparts are more likely to consume flour tortillas, boiled beans, boiled rice, cereal, salad, low-fat milk, and minimal fruit. It has been shown that non-acculturated individuals had a higher intake of nutrients beneficial for pregnancy, including protein, calcium, iron, carbohydrates, vitamins A and C, as well as folic acid, while acculturated individuals had a decreased intake of these essential vitamins and minerals. Acculturated individuals believe that not only is it an ideal physical state, but an emotional state as well, that is necessary to balance the overall health during pregnancy. Now, to achieve the most beneficial emotional state, many studies claimed that it is necessary to have social support as well. Social support consists of immediate and extended family and community members in the life of the expecting female. Examples of social support include physical presence and thus accountability as seen with the husbands of Hispanic pregnant women, and also the sharing of knowledge and traditional recipes from female relatives and community members. The magnification of positive effects seen with adherence to cultural dietary traditions were noted in Asian populations where lower rates of low birth weight were seen in geographical areas of high ethnic homogeneity. Overall, results indicated that both acculturated Asian and Hispanic mothers showed an increase of low birth weight infants. For example, in the Journal of Immigrant Minority Health, which compared perinatal outcomes of foreign-born and U.S.-born Chinese American mothers, foreign-born mothers had a lower risk for low birth weight, preterm birth, and small for gestational age babies. In Hispanic studies, including a study in the American Journal of Public Health, they found that although foreign-born Hispanic mothers arrive with a lower social economic status, they have lower rates of low birth weight babies than their U.S.-born counterparts. Possible reasons for our findings in our study include that the cultural diet may simply contain more beneficial nutrients for the fetus, while acculturated diets contain less of these nutrients. Another possible reason for our findings is that cultures have adapted to certain foods. Since both Asian and Hispanic mothers had improved infant health, despite the differences in their respective traditional dietary practices. These findings are important for physicians and healthcare workers so they can better understand the potential negative effects of a acculturated dietary practice on prenatal care. In the future, healthcare workers should encourage non-acculturated or traditional dietary practices within a strong social network. There are several limitations and future directions for this study. First, in Asian studies, it was found that the foreign-born immigrants usually came from a higher socioeconomic status, providing a potential confounding factor and that they were able to better access pre prenatal care services. It was noted in our study 
that social support of family and friends was a strong indicator of how well the pregnant mothers maintain cultural diet. So future researchers should examine if social support is thus an essential component in producing these positive effects or acts to merely amplify them. Lastly, there was limited data on the measurements of infant health, so future studies should look at measurements other than just low birth weight, such as infant mortality rates and survival rates following birth. This concludes our virtual presentation. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it.